Right now, there are 25 major wildfires burning across the state of California. Looking at the satellite imagery here, you can see that basically the entire state is just covered in a layer of smoke. We've got the August complex up here, the Butte complex with just a ton of smoke coming off it up here. We've got Creek Fire and then numerous fires in Southern California. So there's lots to talk about, so I think we should just dive straight in. The first thing I notice on this map though is how poor the air quality is. And if we actually look at the air quality map, you can see that that's exactly true. We even have hazardous to very unhealthy air down by the creek fire. And then you can see this moderate to unhealthy air basically is covering entire Northern California to the valley. So that is a major concern today, as well as the possibility of these fires expanding and new fires actually starting. So the first fire I want to talk about is the Creek Fire here. Now this started about four to five days ago, and it has just really blown up in the last couple of days. If you remember my videos from a couple weeks ago over the LNU, SCU, and CZU Lightning Complex wildfires, the first thing you might notice is we never saw a heat signature like this. So basically what this map shows is the fire perimeter and then these red dots show the hot spots where the fire is actively burning. And personally, I have never seen a fire burning this hot according to this map. And the major area of concern right now is this southern edge as it's working its way into Auberry. Now the main reason there has been a ton of advancement on the southern edge is because the winds have been coming straight east and they've been strong, so it's been pushing this fire down into Auberry. But luckily, when we get into the weather forecast, it looks like the winds should be shifting throughout the day today. But yeah, nothing, nothing else to really say here other than the fact that this fire is burning extremely hot. That The main reason for that is because of all the dead timber in the area, and we'll get into that in a couple minutes as well. So just getting into the stats for this fire, you can see it is already up over 150,000 acres with 0% containment. And again, when it comes to evacuations, there's too many for me to possibly go over. So I will put the link in the description so that you can check to see if your area is on this list. We are unfortunately already up to 360 structures destroyed. There are over a thousand personnel on this, 19 crews and nine helicopters, 114 engines, 13 dozers, and 13 water tenders. Now, one other thing I will say about this fire, when it first started, there were a number of Chinook helicopters that actually went into a campground, and I'm proud to say that my family friend was actually one of the pilots, and on one of their rescue missions, they got 101 people out of the campground in one Chinook helicopter rescue mission. So, Unbelievable effort by all the CAL FIRE and rescue forces that have been involved with this fire so far. So when we look at the weather forecast for how this fire is going to develop, there are some concerning things in the forecast, I'm not going to lie. The main concern right now is this red flag warning. For those of you who don't know, basically that just means it's going to be very tricky firefighting conditions. It's going to be hot windy, low humidities, and there's going to be a very high probability of new fires starting and existing fires really spreading out further. So you can see there is a red flag warning for this area as well as most of Northern California as well. Now when we actually get into this forecast, the main area of concern here I would say is around 12 p.m. today. You can see it's going to be warm, 83 degrees at 12, getting up to 86, 87 later. This is the forecast for Auberry. The thing I'm really concerned about, though, is these 17 mile per hour wind gusts. And to be honest, that might actually be a low number. I was seeing some sources that said we could get 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. Now, why that's important, one, it spreads the fire. Two, it can actually pick up some burning embers, toss them elsewhere. It's called spotting and start new fires. And then this humidity is a major concern. That's in the teens today, getting down to maybe 15, 16%. The reason that bad, that's bad is because if the air is dry, then the vegetation gets dry and fires are able to burn 
easier. So that's a big concern today around 12 p.m. The good news in this forecast, I would say there's possibly two areas of good news. Tomorrow, it's still going to be warm, windy, and dry. But it looks like it's going to be a little less windy, and it looks like there's going to be a little more moisture in the air. The other area of good news is you see how at the start of this period, these winds are coming straight from the east, and that was what was blowing this fire down into Aubrey. Well, you can see for most of the day today, it's actually going to switch down to almost southwest to almost straight west. So what that's going to do is instead of hopefully, instead of this fire just moving down here with that strong east wind, it will possibly start to just shift back into the area it's already burned. That's wishful thinking though. I would say in general, this is by no means a good forecast right now, especially for the period today when we're going to have some really tricky firefighting conditions. So I'm going to keep my eye on tomorrow. It looks like this red flag is going to be lifting at about 8 p.m. tonight. So I'll keep my eye on that to see if it lifts earlier and I'll let you guys know. So one interesting thing about the Creek Fire as you can see, it blew up to about 150,000 acres in four to five days. And when this fire first started, uh, I talked to Dr. Craig Clements, one of the top fire weather experts in possibly the entire United States. And he said this fire created a pyrocumulus cloud that has never been seen before in history. Basically what that means is the fire is burning so intensely, it creates its own thunderstorm, which then creates lightning. So this fire has just been really historic, to be honest. It's been historic. And the main reason for that, obviously it's hot, windy, and dry. But, you know, that's true for a lot of the fires that we've seen recently. The main reason this one has been so bad is because of tree mortality. So on this map, you can see Shaver Lake right there, Aubrey right there. And if we actually look at the tree mortality, you can see... It is basically covering this entire region. I heard one Cal Fire representative say that 80 to 90% of the trees in the Creek Fire area have died due to bark beetle and due to drought. So when you mix 90% of your trees being dead, high winds, dry air, warm temperatures, it honestly just makes sense that you're going to get a gigantic fire. So I'm going to be watching this one closely as well as a number of other fires in the area. So the next one I want to look at is this August complex up in Northern California. Now, I haven't really been hearing too much about this fire, but if we zoom in here, you can see that there are just tons of hotspots with this one as well. This is satellite picking up the heat signatures from space, and you can really see that in the last day, a lot of those hotspots moved out of the previous fire perimeter. So this fire is still actively expanding. And we can really see that if we click into how many acres it has burned. You can see it's up to 420,000 acres. Now to put that in perspective, that would officially put the August complex as the number two largest California wildfire in history passing up the SCU and the LNU that are still actively burning, but not they're not actively expanding as much as the August complex appears to be right now. So that is now the number two fire in California history. And it's kind of interesting because I haven't felt like I've been hearing that much about this one. Now, one thing I will mention about the forecast for this area, there is also a red flag warning for basically all of Northern California. Like I was saying earlier, it leads to easier fire starts, potential for rapid spread of fire. This one's through Wednesday morning, so it will be ending relatively soon. That's what's concerning though, the 35 to 45 mile per hour winds, humidity is down to five to 15%. That's not what we want to see, so I'm certainly going to be keeping my eye on the August complex as well. Now the other one, that is worth looking at here is this Butte complex. Now, like the August complex, I haven't been hearing too much about this, but you can see basically the entire thing looks like it's still actively burning. 
and there's a real hot spot moving up to the northeast. Now, if we check this out, you can see the Butte complex is now up to about 70,000 acres. It says it's 60% contained, but I find it hard to believe that this fire is under too much control when you see how hot it is still burning. Now, the reason I think this one is really worth noting is this is the fire that it looked like there was a ton of smoke coming off of it earlier this morning. And what you will notice is the this acre number and containment number is as of last night. So I'm going to be interested to see if this gets updated and if this acreage has significantly increased in the overnight hours. Now, the last couple of fires I'll mention are the Valley Fire in San Diego. This is now up to 17,000 acres. It is at 11% containment, something to certainly keep our eye on. And the El Dorado Fire, which actually started because of a gender reveal party and cancel that. So the El Dorado fire, which started because of a gender reveal party, is now up over 11,000 acres, and it says 19% containment. Now for both of these fires, there are going to be some high winds later in the afternoon today, so definitely going to be watching these as well. As always, thank you to Cal Fires for all the amazing work you do, and thank you to the San Jose State Fire Weather Research Lab. Basically, everything I know about wildfire is because of my work with the Fire Lab and Dr. Craig Clements. So, thank you, and good luck to all the citizens of California. I will keep you guys updated as these fires progress.